Hello, welcome to Third World Miss Explores. My name is Bonolo. If you're joining me for the first time, I hope you find reason enough to come back another time. And if you're returning, I welcome the warm embrace of your attention. <laughs> It's August, so in South Africa, that means that it's Women's Month. I thought it would be interesting for me to just kind of go through Twitter and see what would be on the agenda for commemorating it this year. And I've seen a couple of things that are of interest, not least of which the president's refusal to answer any questions he hasn't already addressed in a prepared statement. This is a big red flag from the supposed leader of a democracy, symptomatic of a society that suffers from the same kind of obstinance. Anyway, I want to get into the history of Women's Month in South Africa. I'll just give a little context. Every year in August, South Africa commemorates the action of more than 20,000 women against the tyranny of the apartheid government. On 9 August 1956, women from all over South Africa gathered in the capital of Pretoria and marched to the union buildings to present their petition to then Prime Minister J.G. Stradom. Many of the African women wore traditional dress, others wore the Congress colors of green, black and gold. Indian women were clothed in white saris. Many women had babies on their backs and some domestic workers brought their white employers' children along with them. Throughout the demonstration, the huge crowd displayed a discipline and dignity that was deeply impressive. The South African government had been issuing permits and passes since 1913, but in the 1950s, they decided they wanted tighter control over activity in urban areas to better enforce their policies of segregation. In the Western Cape, which had been declared a preferred area for colored people, no black people could obtain work unless the Labor Department declared that colored people were unavailable for work. No new families could enter the area. Women and children who did not legally qualify to stay would be sent back to the reserves or homelands, and men already working there were housed in hostels with other male migrant workers. Family accommodations did not reflect the increasing population. Past laws were systematically tearing families apart. Now, only work seekers and women with special permission to be in the area were initially required to carry those papers, and any who didn't, and eventually those who couldn't prove their right to be in any one of those areas throughout the country, could be arrested or deported. The march to the union buildings was considered a great success in showing that the women's place is anywhere women choose to be. Stradom was not there to meet the protesters and the bundles of petitions were left outside the Prime Minister's offices as had been done the year before. The Federation of South African Women as well as the Congress Alliance decided that as of 9 August 1956, the day would be celebrated as Women's Day. South Africa's constitution is often lauded for producing laws and policies intended to protect women's rights and promote gender equality, but most of South Africa's poor and unemployed are women. Black women are the face of poverty. Women in rural areas continue to be marginalized and oppressed. All South African women are exploited by the economy, and at home, we live under the specter of violence. Government has produced all sorts of legislation, policies, and campaigns in pursuit of empowering women, but I dare say that these are personal rather than institutional achievements. South African women thrive because we want to and because we have to. As they say, the killing doesn't stop in August. South Africa has one of the highest rates of gender-based violence in the world. Don't play with me, you know a perk. Between 2019 and 2020, when we were all forced to stay at home, sexual offences increased by 146 incidents per day, 116 of which were rapes. Part of the petition in 1956 was to keep women and girls safe from humiliation and degradation at the hands of law enforcement. And there is as much to fear now as there was then. I couldn't help but notice that the attitude of a lot of people discussing 
women's rights, gender-based violence. Usually within a few months or a year, it's business as usual. Another TV and media personality, Gatla Homabue, recently got his job on SABC 3's Espresso Bag. Gatejo will not take responsibility for basically what he's been accused of. And the sad part is there's just so many examples of this. The one thing missing by and large in all of these stories is The word accountability comes from the Latin computare, to count, also denoting a capacity and obligation to produce a count or tally of properties left in one's care. In the social sciences, accountability is the principle by which a person or other entity is held responsible for some set of duties and is required to report on the fulfillment of such duties to another person or entity with authority. Basically, accountability is how we try to ensure that we are building democracies of representation, where chosen leaders are held liable for their actions, where they have a sense of responsibility in their decision making, and where they know they answer to the people. Accountability has been a long-running, if understated, theme of the women's rights movement. Women were seen as inferior during apartheid and colonialism because of their sex and were underrepresented in politics. Organizations like the Federation of South African Women and African National Congress Women's League came in to fill the void, automatically assuming authority as the voice of South African women and accepting responsibility to get the male-led government to listen. The decorum of the women gathered at the union buildings speaks to that ethos of representation and responsibility that ruled over them. They knew they represented millions of other South Africans. The March of 56 was successful because the women and their allies did everything in their power to carry out their responsibility. So when we celebrate Women's Day, we need to remember that it has nothing to do with what we've earned via the perks of femininity. We need to take advantage of what we already have and become active in improving proving it. That means holding ourselves accountable too, reporting, questioning and challenging within and outside our close circles. Okay, so I'm just going to assume that Ntsiki Mazwai was incredibly disappointed seeing 
So Mizi continue to be on a platform that he doesn't deserve to be on. What started as commiseration with victims and survivors of gender-based violence devolved into a tirade calling the femininity of homosexual men into question. And this is an issue that wasn't even on the table. When she said gay men had not suffered the same oppression as women, she was trying to make the LGBTQI plus community account for Somizi's wrongdoings as an individual. Gay people and trans people are not at all responsible for the way Somizi has conducted himself. So I just used Nziki Mazwai as an example to show how we don't know what to do with the blame. I think what Nziki took away from the conversation on that day is what to do when somebody has been found guilty of perpetrating gender-based violence. You know, how do we hold that person responsible? And I want to use Patrick Shai as an example. The first step in combating gender-based violence is a proactive approach. Those responsible for perpetuating the harm must take accountability. This is Mkate Mokulu Patrick Shai. Patrick Shai was born in 1956 in the township of Sapphire Town. Following the forced removals of the 60s, he grew up in Meadowlands and trained as a dancer, but he found his way to the stage soon enough as a young man in the 80s. As an actor, Shai came to portray and resemble the black man, Monna Indota, as many of us South Africans understand that. As a director, he was able to set a narrative through his own projection of the black man in South Africa. Shai was able to see and show himself from quite a few angles, but he chose to expose a side of himself that others like him lack the honesty to do. Kulumandota is an organization, movement or program Shai founded. It appears defunct or forgotten now, which is sad because whatever it is or was, it's still a call to action for men like him to pursue correction in their behavior and attitudes. Having survived assault myself, I'll always be suspicious of any reform in perpetrators, but I applaud Shai for constantly showing up while the rest ask, what about male victims? While they equate equality, with one-on-one -on -one fist fights and continue to protect others who perpetuate a culture of abuse. Shai was active in many campaigns and drives promoting a proactive and responsible movement for men. Not to toot his horn, I'm just saying that his activism came from the personal. Ramaphosa doesn't feel at all out of place. He's not embarrassed that his party members have decided to ignore the step aside rule. This was invented to stop corruption from within the organization. He let his office tweet that victims of rape and sexual assault should speak up sooner, knowing full well that his criminal justice system will have the perpetrators out on bail in 0 to 60 seconds, obstinately unaccountable. To better commemorate 1956. They knew what their principles were. You don't all have to be activists. I'm not an activist. It's not about shaming people. But this lack of accountability has manifested itself. It's been extremely concerning to see the emergence of the manosphere in South Africa. It's just going to embolden perpetrators and other people who enjoy feeling powerful in the patriarchy. 
find a cause okay and just learn how to be a good person you know if you disagree please feel free to let me know in the comments i will be so happy to engage with the people who are watching my videos and then you can follow me on twitter i'm going to be working on episode three of who messed up south africa please look out for that okay i think let me see yeah I think that's everything I wanted to say.